right, uh, class, welcome back to English 1301. Uh, we're going to continue with the memoir, and I want to talk about some deadlines here. I want to talk about your portfolios and how to submit them when the time comes in your class. I'm going to also lecture today some more <clears throat> on memoir writing and talk about it. But let's take care of, once again, the housekeeping things that are coming up. Now, as I had mentioned before and sent out in a memo for <clears throat> sections 11924 and 11941, those are my Monday, Wednesday, and Friday hybrid classes. Your deadline is se uh, September 17th for this essay and then on 12699 a CRN 11944 and 12092 my online class is September 21st so remember those deadlines the 17th for those two classes September 21st for the other three now when you go to turn these into me you will turn them in through um, just simply Blackboard messages. That's what you can turn it into. And you're going to send me three documents. A rough draft that I'm just going to look over. Uh, the final draft, which um, will be your final draft and I will grade. And then verification that you went to the writing center. And uh, <clears throat> they'll let me know that. Now you can... For those of you that are, of course, on the online classes, uh, the Writing Center, I already sent you a link to the Writing Center at Viverdi, so you have that. And then you could also, if you decide at Viverdi, go in person if you want. You don't have to. But that's A1425 is the building number of the Writing Center uh, at Viverdi. I was there today. So A1425 is the writing center for those of you that are hybriding it. However, I just want, you know, the verification. Three documents. Verification from the writing center. First draft, second draft. And the second draft is going to be the final draft. That will be the essay that I will grade. Now, class, once again, when you send these to me, Send them in micro, by Microsoft Word documents. That's what I can, not as a PDF, because I can't grade a PDF. I can't get in there and grade it. But just a simple Microsoft Word document. All right, that's how I'll accept, accept the work. And, and that's what everyone's used to anyway. So if you need help with that, get help. Go to the Ryan Center Technology Services. Um, Microsoft Word documents, all right? So three items. Now, the length of your essay, once again, all essays this semester will be 700 to 1,000 words, all right? 700 to 1,000 words is going to be the length of your essay. Now, what is the essay going to look like? Class, uh, by tomorrow, I will send you an example of a perfectly formatted essay. In the meantime, and even though it's going to be a digital representation of, say, for example, a hard copy essay, <coughs> I'll give you a heads up and show you that this is what an essay is going to look like. <coughs> Excuse me, class. Just like this. Okay. So, once again, single space up here, name, English 1301, section number, uh, fall of 2021, and then my name, Welsh. Okay, I'll send you this over. It's going to look exactly like this. Then you single space down, you underline your title for your essay, indent and start. And then you run it. This is Times New Roman 12-point type. Class, no extra spacing between the paragraphs. 
indent every time you go to use paragraph and if you need class to make adjustments or if it doesn't come out looking exactly like this the first time as a professor class I'm here to help you so I may send things back and I won't take off any points hey you know what go back look at the correct essay format send it again send it again send it again when I have a portfolio complete for each student rough draft final draft writing center verification essay in the correct format uh, because this is how all your essays will look at for the rest of your uh, career Microsoft Word documents boom I'll sit down with the final draft draft and I'll grade it okay usually to get a set of essays back to students when they turn them in after the date they turn them in it takes me two weeks to get an essay back because I grade them I actually grade them and I take time I'll put a lot of time into grading so you can ex expect it back two weeks from the day uh, that you turned it in all right and so that's where we are in regards to uh, the essays all right so so we will we will have that and I think class that we'll see we'll just deal with this first essay the way it works on that and then after the first essay I don't want to get too far ahead I'll discuss these essays I will talk about what I saw in them we'll start moving to the next uh, for uh, the next segment of study in this class but right now just let's get you working on this so that's what we need so once again that correct essay format I'll send it to you within the next couple days for sure now so that's where we are class very good I wanted to talk a little bit about now that you're you're in the drafting phase of your essay you should know what you want to write uh, you should have your essay focused of what you want to write from the homework. Um, start drafting. And as you're continuing to draft, um, you know, have fun with it once again. And then we'll go through the different stages of drafting. But the main thing is, class, is just trying to get, get, it, get, get, get the work down on the page like I shared last time. Get, get it on the page. Uh, however you're going to do it however you're going to do that rough draft just just get it on the page and then you can go back once you have the rough draft done and you can say wow now I'm going to clean it up now I'm going to put it in the computer if it's not already into the computer and now I'm going to start working with that with those words with that type and, and you work to clean it up get it to that place of once again 700 to a thousand words 700 to a thousand words and and you know you work it you work it and then you keep cleaning get it as tight and clean as you can and then think about once again <coughs> in my regular classes today or I should say the hybrid class I ask students you know start thinking about how are you going to start it there's so many ways strategy wise <coughs> excuse me class how are you going to start it you know and it gives us some techniques in this last handout that I've given you the final handout for this seg segment of study on page uh, 178 in the handout at the bottom of the page it says you know review the writing you have done so far Draw on the sketching you have done, the writing that compares possibly past and present perspectives. And notice how the writers that we've read, Gary Soto and Annie Dillard, notice how class they have framed their memoirs to highlight the revelations that make these writings meaningful. For example, at the opening paragraph, Gary Soto introduces the idea that there are two kinds of work and then after telling about his experience at the tire factory he returns in the last six paragraphs to explain 
what he found out about work that uses muscle. Okay. So that's how we framed it. And then once he started it, you drop us into it, to the scene. Or with him, there are different scenes. With the essays throwing snowballs, she frames it. Annie Dillard also uses this strategy to frame her essay in the opening passage. She anticipates the larger significance of the event she's about to recreate. I got in trouble throwing snowballs and have seldom been happier since, she tells us. That's how she opens it. Then she tells the story of the man who chased her and her immense discovery. At the end of the memoir, Dillard extends the meaning of the opening line, if quote-unquote, she tells us, in that essay, that great essay, if in that snowy backyard the driver of the black Buick had cut off our heads, Mikey's and mine, I would have died happy for nothing has required so much of me since as being chased all over Pittsburgh in the middle of winter, running, terrified, exhausted. All right? So... 700,000 words. Frame it. Start off with a little, and there's many ways to frame it. I had a student today said, Mr. Welsh, I've started writing my essay, and I want to write about, um, I want to start it with the day I met my former boyfriend at Burgess High School. I said, I already like it, because she had the focus of she was down to that date, that time, that high school and where she met this man, you know, this young, it was still, I guess, a boy, a teenager. And she said, then she's going to let us know what happened with that relationship. She said she knew going into it, it was bad. But she went in anyways. And once again, we don't judge her for that. I've made... I'm human too. I'm just a lot older than you guys, but uh, you know I've made mistakes too, or I've done stuff where I thought to myself, you know, I shouldn't be doing this, or I shouldn't be uh, going into this situation, and I went into it anyways. Sometimes in relationships, sometimes with dating people, and I said, <coughs> this may not be right, but it might be fun, or it might be wild, or I don't know. So then, you know, she said she's going to take it from there, and um, quite a few, some years have passed. She got pregnant. She had a baby. Um, the guy is now gone, and she's 20 years old and raising this little girl. All right. And she's looking at <clears throat> her life of how she got to be where she is now and what she learned from all of this, what she learned from all of this. So she's going to drop us into the high school at Burgess that day. And it's simple that she come out with a couple of narratives and then she can have the, her father of her child or one time boyfriend give some dialogue. Boom, and talk to us, and then we're writing the essay. And then she's going to take it, you know, she's going to take it uh, from there. Um, I think she said, you know, she's going to, uh, in the end, like Gary Soto's does, jumps and let us learn what she learned. She moved away from El Paso. Uh, she went to Houston, lived with him. It was kind of a tough time in her life. She's back in El Paso. So this is a, her essay is going to be an essay of struggle class. And that's all right. Those are great essays because no matter who we are or, or what we're going through in life, we're all, we're all going to struggle sometime in our lives. And so, but now this young woman is in English 1301. She's very serious about school. I tell she's done all the homework. And she wants to kick ass in life because now she feels like she's mature. And she wants to go to school. So I'm going to help her. You know, I'm her professor. 
I'm here to help her, right? And so that's how she's going to drop her essay. Uh, that's where she's going to drop it into. That's where she's going to drop it into. Uh, knowing that she was heading into trouble and she had it went into trouble. Um, and now she's going another direction in life. It's all good. She's only 20, right? She's a young woman. God love her. You know, she's got her whole life, man. She's on a good track now. Like uh, I mentioned, another student's going to write about the night that she she told me she had figured out she'd had enough partying. She'd had enough partying. And she's going to quit drinking. This is her trip. You know, I talked about it last time been sober now seven months. Wow, what an incredible thing for her. But she had some problems. So right about the night where you hit your bottom. Okay. Where you hit your bottom. Because now she's been sober seven months. Right about that night at the bottom if you want. And let us know when that light switch went on for you. When you had that epiphany. That I want to live a new life. I want to change. I don't want to keep going down this road I'm going down because she said it was a road of darkness and death. <clears throat> Class, I didn't say it. She said it. She said, can I write about it, Mr. Welsh? I said, absolutely. Stay on your path of life. <clears throat> you know, especially if you're trying to get through college. <clears throat> you know, she can write sober. She said she can't write drunk. I like it. So I proved her that one too. So, <coughs> class, selecting detail on 179 of that handout I gave you. Memoirists often use techniques. So, all I want you all of the, to do this for me. It's what Gary Soto does, it's what uh, Annie Dillard does. Memoirists often use techniques you can find in fiction. Scene setting. Description of people, action, and dialogue. You're going to have all of those in your essay. These techniques enable memoirists, like fiction writers, to recreate the past in vivid and convincing detail. Designing a memoir like fiction writing involves decisions about the type and amount of detail you need to make to make your recreation of the past memorable to readers. Now, over the years, have I read some memorable memoirs? Yes. I've read some fantastic memoirs at the community college. Some that still say, stay in my mind. You know, that spin around. And then, of course, I've read some that aren't so good. But a lot of times, if they're not so good, <clears throat> and I'm here to help, it's because maybe there's a problem with the basics, right? Sentence structure, grammar, punctuation, flow, all these things that you get to work on, right? Because I'm working on them, too. I'm working on them too. I was just, uh, it, it's really weird. I was in uh, class today and, and I showed them a format like this, how your essay is going to look. And it was happened to be that I'm reworking a memoir that I worked on for years and now cutting it up just like you guys. And so I held it up today because I was working on it last night trying to tweak it. I liked it, but there were some things now that I want to pull out separate chapters and kind of tweak them up a bit. So I was doing it. And when I do that work, <clears throat> I always think of my students. All right. How writing is challenging. It's wonderful, but what does it take? Work. You know, I was sweating it last night. Not real hard because I, I wrote this book. It took me 10 years to write. Um, and, uh, now I'm looking over some 
aspects of it because I haven't published it yet, class. I'd like to one day. I think it's publishable. I've had people say it's publishable, but it isn't published yet. But, however, um, it's not a big deal in October, late October, November. I'm going to have my 13th book published. So I'm in the game. I'm hitting it. It's just I have other books, too, that I've written that I'm trying to, you know, stay with it. So I say this all because of you. You're going to write. I'm going to write. You're going to try and improve. I'm going to try and improve. You're a student. Este en español. Estudiante. I'm a student. I'm a, in español, in, in Spanish, in español, profesor de inglés. So I'm an English professor, but more importantly, I'm a student, right? Professor de inglés means a professor of English in Spanish. And so, but mainly, I'm a student, right? Trying to come up, trying to put the words. So how you put the words together and the sentences is all you. You have a lot of freedom to do it in that 700 to 1,000 words class. In that 700 to 1,000 words. So, what do you want to do? Scene setting, right? Set the scene. Like, so, with this young woman, I told her day, I said, think about that day. For her, it was five years ago when she met that dude in class. Think about what time of year it was. Think, see if you can remember what that classroom was at Burgess. What it smelled like, what the feel was like. You may not use all those details, but you can use some of them to make your memoir come alive, all right? To make that memoir uh, come alive. Set the scene. Under scene setting class, it says, use vivid and specific description to set the scene. Name particular objects. Give details about places and things and use description and detail to establish mood. You'll all do it differently. I've seen it done very well. Right? But just drop us into that world. That's the challenge, you know, so this can be memorable. And then it says here, class, you want to have description of people, right? Use descriptions of people's appearances to highlight their personalities in your memoir. Describe the clothes they are wearing. Give details about a person's physical presence, gestures, facial features, and hairstyle. Mention or note his personal habits. Use description and detail to establish character. Annie Dillard did it. Gary Soto did it. You're going to do it. You know, how much? I don't, you know, it's up to you. How are you going to lay it on? Once again, it's up to you, but give us some of those descriptions to once again bring the situation to life, you know, the specific details. Class, every one of you will use dialogue. What is dialogue? Talking. <clears throat> what does talking do in a memoir? It puts us right in the place, right in the action. How much dialogue do you have to use? You just have to use some. Who's going to be talking? That's up for you to decide. Put words in your character's mouth that reveal their personalities. Invent dialogue that is faithful to people's ways of speaking, even if you don't use their exact words. Use dialogue to establish relationships between characters. All right? So sometimes the technique is and I used to do this as a newspaper reporter. You come out, give a couple of sentences, boom, drop it into dialogue, okay? So let me give you an example, and this is just off my head. So we're talking about this young woman who went to Burgess. We're talking about five years ago. We're talking about, let's say, let's give the guy a name, let's give him the name Romeo. Let's call him Romeo Smith, and let's start her essay before it could be something like this. So here's how simple it can be, but challenging. Let's start in off the top of my head. 
It was a warm spring day in El Paso, comma, perhaps a hundred degrees out, and I was still a junior at Burgess High School. Never that day did I dream I would meet a young man who would change my fate in life. But that's exactly what happened, third period, when Romeo Smith dropped into my geometry class, period. Are we in the essay? Yes. And then we could have a quote from uh, Romeo. Hey, Maria, I've been watching you lately. I just wanted to know how are you doing and how, what's, can you help me at all with my geometry po homework, period, Romeo said. And then she can answer him back in class. That essay is rolling. Simple. Don't make these essays more uh, difficult than they have to be. We're in that essay. And then she takes it from there. She tells about what happened with Romeo Smith. She talks in the end about Romeo Smith not being around anymore. She could talk, drop us in, maybe out of Burgess, give us some background about her getting pregnant, her moving to Houston, 700 to 1,000 words. And in the end, this young woman, my student, is going to let us know what she learned in the, since then about life. Class, now she's at community college. Her kid's a year and a half old. Romeo isn't around, but she's revolutionizing her life. She's a young mother growing up with her baby. And she wants school. She told me, I want this, Mr. Welsh. I said, if you want it, I want it. I'll help you. If you want it, I want it. If you want it, I want it. If you want it, I want it. You want to kick ass? <clears throat> excuse me, I want you to kick ass. I'm not going to stop you. I'm only going to help you. Come on, let's do it. So now I'm, you know, I'm thinking about when I, when I get this essay, I look forward to reading it. I want to know a little more about what happened. Bottom line, she's young. She's in college. During a challenging time, she's going to write me an essay. So send it in clean. Send it in clean and I'll read it. All right? Class. The last thing you want in your essay is action. <clears throat> Put the characters in your memoir in motion. Put them in motion. Use narrative to tell about something that happened. Use narrative to develop characters and reveal the theme of your memoir. So, that's where we are. You got some time. Today is, uh, we got about a week left until these are due. For those first two groups and then a few more days for the others. So just keep working it, hitting it, having some fun with it. Get it to the writing center. Give them some time with it. And then, you know, get your best foot forward. Send me these essays once again and, and I'll grade them and we'll start moving forward. And remember that these are also, you know, essays of discovery. When you write about, I had a student today in class said, Mr. Welsh, I, I, um, I only started keeping a journal, she said, in the last couple years because um, I was down in Houston at the time and I was feeling lonely and frustrated and my friends weren't communicating very well with me. So I kept a journal. Class, that's fantastic. Because, you know, when we journal, we learn about our lives. It doesn't mean you have to. But my hope is one day you all will. I wish I would have kept one when I was real young, but I didn't. But there came a time where, you know, I started hitting it. And then that also helps us improve our writing. But she said she was trying to figure out a lot of her life because she was kind of in a tough spot. And she said she figured it out once again by writing about it. All right, man, by writing about it. And I'm like, you know, cool. And we've become better writers by, once again, hitting it. How You know, however we can hit it because we're dealing with words. 
And then finally, class, as I mentioned last lecture, you give yourself permission to be you, right? I don't want you to be me. I don't want you to be Gary Soto. I don't want you to be Annie Dillard. We can learn from those people, right? Those are people who have dedicated their lives to writing. But once again, this journey is about you and, 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 and working the memoir. Right now, for this segment of the class, and trying to, you know, uh, get you through this segment. And then we'll one day at a time move on to the next type of writing. But memoir is a great type of writing to do. So, with that said, class, <clears throat> I'm going to wish you good luck. Good luck, good luck, good luck. And um, I look forward to reading your work. And I hope you have a, a great weekend. And uh, like I said, tomorrow, if not tonight, most probably tomorrow, I will send you that perfectly uh, formatted essay that we talked about. 12-point type, uh, indent your paragraphs, Microsoft Word sets up the margins, uh, Times Roman type, you know, and have it looking clean, have it looking like this, and then I'll look forward to seeing your work. Class, have a great weekend. I'll leave you with the Irish. I always like to say is good luck, good luck, good luck. I'm wishing you luck. I'm wishing you that both uh, you and your families all stay well during these challenging times. And, and we'll, we'll catch up next time uh, with another, um, another posted lecture. All right, class, all the best. Do your best work now. And uh, I look forward to seeing your work when it comes in. Take care.